Hi everyone and welcome to my channel where I talk about movies and in the month of July 2023 I'm talking exclusively about Criterion releases uh, to coincide with the Barnes & Noble half price sale uh, that's going on through July 28th on Criterion titles. So I'm going to talk about some of the movies that I've recently purchased but also interspersed three or four uh, classic titles that are in the uh, Criterion Collection, and today, one of the great classic comedies of all time. This is The Lady Eve, uh, starring Barbara Stanwyck and Henry Fonda, directed by Preston Sturgis. By any account, this is one of the great comedies ever made, certainly one of the great comedies out of, uh, out of Hollywood. I've seen it many times. I hadn't seen it in a couple of years since this, this uh, Criterion release came out. I think it was in uh, 2021, might have been 2020. But I'd seen it many times before, and it was just absolute delight on, uh, on my umpteenth uh, rewatch. Uh, so <clears throat> it's, it's basically, as most comedies are, Hollywood comedies in particular, it's about boy meets girl. This is boy meets girl times two. <laughs> and it's very much a story, as the title might indicate to Lady Eve, it's a story about the Garden of Eden in some, some way because we have a snake. In fact... The titles have a snake, uh, animated snake. Uh, I think it was one of the first movies ever you use animation in a title, in, in the credit sequence. Um, and we have an apple. Uh, and, uh, when uh, Henry Fonda boards a liner out at sea, he's, they stop specially, this big ocean liner stops specially to pick up Henry Fonda. And as he's climbing up the rope, uh, we have Barbara Stanwyck in an upper level with, chewing on an apple and then falling and hitting uh, Henry Fonda on the head. <laughs> so this is going to be about the fall of man. <laughs> but basically, it's going to be about the pratfalls of man as much as the fall of man. Um, Henry Fonda plays a rich scion of a ale fortune, Pike's Ale, the ale that won for Yale, rah, rah, <laughs> uh, and... He's, he's rich, and he's the ski on his fortune, but he hates beer. He hates ale. Uh, he loves snakes. He's, he's been uh, on, a, on a desert island and, uh, studying snakes and being attended to by his uh, all-purpose valet, played by William Demarest. So as he boards ship, uh, all the women on board, you know, see him because he's not just a, a very, very rich man and famous for that, for that wealth, but he's also incredibly good looking. <laughs> and he's also a bit dim, especially when it comes to the ladies. Uh, so, but, um, a, uh, and he quickly uh, hooks up <laughs> through, a, through one of his pratfalls with a band of card sharks, uh, Colonel Harrington, played by Charles Coburn. Uh, his daughter, Jean, played by, um, Barbara Stanwyck, and then we have their their valet Gerald, and he gets involved with uh, with Henry Fonda's uh, uh, valet, played by William Demarest, uh, Murgatroyd, Ambrose. He's called, him, but we'll call him Muggsy, and we're going to call Henry Fonda Hopsy because that's what Gene calls him as well, and and they view him quite quickly as a prime sap. He he brags, Hopsy brags that he knows card tricks and. And so they set him up perfectly. And, and, uh, and, and Jean, the Barbara Stanwyck character, she, she's, going to, she's going to put her hooks in him. Uh, but, you know, romance gets in the way of all this, <laughs> of all this uh, conniving. Um, so we have this really great uh, shipboard romance. And this is, a, this is a staple of Hollywood as well as Boy Meets Girl. This is one of the best. Um, and it's a very sexy movie. Preston Sturgis was just outstanding at the way he could uh, get around the censors. And there's many different elements here. If you like to see how the production code gets circumvented by a very creative writer-director, uh, this is one to see because this, the scenes are uh, the scenes between Stanwyck and uh, and Fonda on the on the ship are just just. Uh, are just incredible. He becomes cockeyed over her perfume. Uh, she she just is just a hilarious seduction. Uh, he has uh, during his pratfall he has damaged one of her shoes, so they end up in her 
uh, in her cabin where he has to pick out another pair of shoes, <laughs> and he is just totally out of his depth. But truth will blow out. Uh, so the first half, the shipboard romance. The second half, set in Connecticut, in the in Hopsey's father's um, Hopsey's father's uh, estate. A big party is a party scene uh, that, that's just as spectacular as the shipboard romance. Um, and we have a whole lot more of Preston Sturgis's stock company enter into it. There's a whole bunch of them on the uh, on the ship. Uh, we get Eric Bloor, who's absolutely hilarious, as a friend of this family of con artists. Uh, he has set up himself in Connecticut, fooling the, uh, fooling the uh, very wealthy people of, of this area that he is he is a English uh, count, and and when uh, when uh, uh, Jean learns that Hopsy is living in this area, uh, she. She wants to seek, I guess she's seeking revenge. <laughs> uh, so she, uh, Barbara Stale puts on this hilariously fake English accent and she just absolutely delights everybody. Uh, Henry Fonda has, we've seen him lose his dignity. <laughs> Hopsy <laughs> has lost his dignity on board ship, but boy, he's gonna lose it again. And uh, so, and multiple pratfalls. This is absolute hilarity. And and uh, William Demarest, uh, Muggsy says, positively the same name. <laughs> but Henry Fonda doesn't want to believe it. Uh, so there's a frantic finale. Uh, Sturgis's films often uh, go off into f just absolute, uh, the pace quickens. The pace is always fast in a Sturgis movie. You gotta listen closely, the dialogue's great. Uh, but it really picks up at the end. And then there's absolutely perfect ending to this film, to this comedy. This is, this is just, uh, just a delight from, from beginning to end. So this is a, the third film, Lady Eve is the third film that uh, Preston Sturgis uh, directed. He was a writer, screenwriter throughout the 1930s. In fact, Barbara Stanwyck appeared in a Sturgis script a year before Four, that was Remember the Night with uh, Fred McMurray. So he had two films before this, Christmas in July and The Great McGinty. Both were big hits without stars. Now Preston Sturgis has perhaps the two biggest stars in Hollywood in 1941. And uh, Barbara Stanwyck herself was on a roll. Barbara Stanwyck was, uh, was uh, in, in 1941, she was in uh, Meet John Doe for Frank Capper with Gary Cooper, Ball of Fire for Howard Hawks from a Billy Wilder script. Um, and she, and then the Lady Eve. So, I mean, she was, she was about as big a star as you can get uh, in that, in, in this, in 1941. And I finished a very long biography of, um, of Barbara Stanwyck and throughout the 1930s, she made 37 films. And most of them were stinkers by her own, by her own estimation, and she worked a lot, and she had a very unhappy marriage with a, uh, a one-time very famous entertainer called Frank Fay. And after they divorced in the mid-30s, he was an abusive alcoholic, and but she loved him, and and uh, she was emotionally devastated. And all she wanted to do was work, so she was constantly in battle with uh, with the uh, with studio heads. Um, but in the late 30s, she just made anything that came her way just to keep working. Uh, so she was regarded as, as a great actress and directors always wanted her for their projects. Now, the studio heads weren't so fond of her and she wasn't the biggest box office. Uh, plus they didn't think she was sexy. Is she sexy in this film? I'd say she is. <laughs> She's certainly lively and she certainly can pull up just about anything that asked of her. It was a very congenial set. This is Preston Sturgis. He, he liked to be on set. He, he played the piano on set. Um, there he is with Stanwyck. Stanwyck said that this was the most fun she ever had making a film. And because uh, Sturgis would often appear in uh, with funny hats and circus outfits, he kept a very he kept a very loose set. To be sure. Now after the Lady Eve, there's two other Sturgis films. 
uh, in the Criterion Collection, both highly recommended. This is Claudette Colbert and Joel McRae in the Palm Beach story. And we get Joel McRae again with Veronica Lake in Sullivan's Travels. These are very much highly recommended, uh, highly recommended uh, uh, Sturgis titles. He was, as I said, he's a creative uh, uh, frenzy himself. Uh, the, he made seven films in four years. They're just unbelievable. I don't think anybody had a stretch of such creativity um, and, and just just in, uh, great uh, enduring comedy as Sturgis had. And then I guess he sort of burned himself out. Uh, and, uh, and Paramount thought he was using this his, his stock company because, I mean, they're everywhere. The, the, for instance, uh, in the Connecticut scenes, we have Eugene Pallette, a great rotund. He, he's actor playing, um, he has like a frog, frog voice. He's playing, <laughs> he's playing Hopsey's father. Uh, and he has a hilarious scene where he, there's party preparations going on and he, the, the uh, you know, the creator of all this great wealth with his, his uh, pike sale, he can't even get, he can't even get uh, breakfast served to him. He's, he's delightful throughout. Robert Gregg shows up. I mentioned uh, Eric Bloor. Uh, so there's always, there, there's the main characters in a Sturgis film, but you gotta look for all these great actors. But the studio didn't, after five or six of Sturgis films, they why are you using the same actor? They're, they're, the uh, you know, public's gonna get tired of looking at all these same actors. But with the Lady Eve, he had a big, he had a, he had a big success. Now, on this uh, Criterion release, there is a commentary by Marion Keene, and it's a very academic commentary. She, I thought it was excellent, uh, but it is academic, and um, uh, she points out a lot of the uh, uh, feminist uh, kind of uh, uh, powerful figure of Barbara Stanwyck here in this film, which is certainly appropriate. There's an introduction by Peter Bogdanovich. There's a uh, Zoom, uh, this is 2020, so this is the era of COVID. So there was a Zoom conversation, uh, and this is led by Tom Sturgis, who was Preston Sturgis' son, and I believe wrote a, a book about his father. But it also includes Ron Shelton, it includes Leonard Moulton, Bogdanovich, James L. Brooks. It's very, a few, couple other people as well. It's a very good, um, uh, very, very good uh, conversation between, um, uh, within this group. We get a video essay by David Cairns, also very good, terrific booklet. I mean, you know, this is this is what all Criterion should be like. <laughs> and uh, we get a uh, sweet revenge, an essay by Jeffrey O'Brien, and then we get a very excellent uh, uh, archival Life magazine article about Preston Sturgis. Brilliant producer of eccentric movie comedies has led an, an eccentric and plausible life. And he did leave, lead a, a, an eccentric life. He, he, he's, this, this is really worth reading because Preston Sturges is one of the great treasures of American cinema. And his films just, uh, they, they keep, for me at least, they keep getting better and better as the years go by. So next up, will be uh, a recent release from Criterion. This is the much uh, anticipated After Hours directed by Martin Scorsese. I was at my, uh, this is a 4K UHD. I was at my Barnes and Noble 930 in the morning uh, making sure that they had this on hand. <laughs> they had about five of them in the rack, so I didn't really have to worry. So that's gonna be up next. Thanks a lot for everybody who managed to listen. I do appreciate it. Comments are welcome. Take care.